Thank you. Thank you. We have a very historic task on our hands. It, has, it is as historic as the challenge that has faced any generation before us. And it's important for us to remember that when this country has faced dark times before, generations rose up and they pushed back all the undemocratic forces that needed to be pushed back. We responded to slavery in this country with abolition. A lot of that, by the way, came from New Hampshire. We responded to oppression of women with two major waves of feminism and the women's suffragette movement. And we responded to institutionalized white supremacy and segregation with the civil rights movement. In none of those cases, ladies and gentlemen, was the change, the fundamental change, the fundamental transformation initiated or even led by the U.S. government. In every single case, the U.S. government represented the forces of the status quo. Abolition and women's suffrage and the civil rights movement, they all happened because the people rose up and the people stepped in. It is time for us to identify the problems not only in our past, but to identify the problems in our present, but to identify with the problem solvers that came before us. They did not listen to a political status quo that said, we can only get you this much. Instead, they remembered the words of the Declaration of Independence. Not only that all men are created equal, not only that God gave all men inalienable rights of life and of liberty and the pursuit of happiness, but also that governments are instituted to secure those rights. And when government's not doing its job, it's the right of the people to alter that or abolish it. Now, I'm certainly not suggesting that we abolish it, but I'm suggesting that it is the most patriotic and traditionally rambunctious and revolutionary American thing to do, to be a generation that rises up and says to all undemocratic forces and all political forces that in any way conspire with them for the sake of the money they bring to the table, that's it, this stops right now. You see, our forefathers did not repudiate an aristocratic system in Europe in 1776, only to see us replace it with a new aristocracy of corporate America. They did not, no, 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 no. We repudiated an aristocratic paradigm in 1776, and the task before us is that it is time to repudiate it again. The idea of a bunch of corporate aristocrats dropping crumbs from the table in the form of jobs. Even the idea of any political forces, even on our own team, who would say to the American people, you shouldn't take those crumbs, we can give you a cookie. No, 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 no. We're Americans and we all get to feast here. The American people have forgotten where the power lies. Because when you forget it in your head and you forget it in your heart, it's no longer in your hands. And so we need to remember that our job is to say to any forces that would only trickle down just a little bit of the abundance that should belong to every American citizen, just a little bit of the freedom that belongs to, should belong to every American citizen, just a little bit of the right to pursue happiness that belongs to every American citizen, we have to remember that it's our job to say to them, no, 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 you give me free health care. You give me a good education and give me a fair shot. I'll create my own damn career. Even if a political establishment is willing to normalize the despair of millions of American children who live with chronic trauma, in classrooms every day where they go to school hungry asking the teachers for food 
in classrooms that don't even have enough school supplies to teach a child to read. And if a child cannot learn to read by the age of eight, the chances of high school graduation are drastically decreased, and the chances of incarceration are drastically increased. Maybe a conventional political establishment is okay not mentioning this. We're not. And when we have a national security agenda that is driven more by the military industrial complex and by short-term profits for defense contractors than in order to proactively wage peace on this planet, maybe the conventional political establishment is okay not mentioning that. We're not. When we have a situation of such turbulence because of economic and social and political injustice towards black Americans and towards Native Americans that continues to be a toxicity and continues to be a turbulence that we simply hand down from generation to generation. Now, maybe there's a conventional political establishment that is willing to simply look away and not mention that we, the people, are not. Ladies and gentlemen. It's time for us to really realize the power was given in the Constitution and in the Declaration of Independence to we, the people. It is not the role of polit political establishment to tell us what the issues are. It is our role to say what the issues are. We're going to reverse climate change. We're going to rescue those traumatized children. We are going to push back against the military industrial complex. We are going to have the reparative measures that we need with black Americans and with Native Americans and we will initiate a season of repair. We will end one aberrational chapter of American history and we will begin a new one. Because we realize that there are haters in this country and there aren't that many of them compared to how many of us who love, but they are politicized and they are convicted and conviction is a force multiplier. We will not push that back with a stale, same old, same old political conversation. That's not what's going to happen. Trump is not just a politician, ladies and gentlemen. He's a phenomenon. And that a same old, same old political conversation will not defeat that. What will defeat that is a phenomenon of our own that has to do with the people rising up because more of us love than hate. But those of us who love need to show as much conviction now as those who hate. We need to love. And we need to love. Yeah, we're the people. We got this. And we need to love not only our own children, but we need to love the children on the other side of town. We need to love not only our children, but the children on the other side of the world. We will not look away from traumatized children. We will not look away from hungry children. We will not look away from systems of injustice due to race from Native Americans. We will not look away from the way a war machine continues to dominate our, our national security. We will not look away from the dangers of climate change. We will not look away. We'll look that stuff right in the eye, and we'll know everything's going to be okay, because we're the people, and we're here. Thank you very, very